Have you seen Notre Dame? Been up the Eiffel Tower? Wandered around Montmartre and you're wondering what's next? Well, the Parisian covered passages are time warp galleries of vintage shops and brasseries dotted across the French capital that make for a perfect rainy day exploration. Largely dating back to the 18th and 19th centuries, the covered passages of Paris were constructed so as to serve as shopping arcades, filled with bookstores, independent boutiques and eateries. Unfortunately, the mass overhaul of the retail industry by department stores saw the demolishment of many of the passages and today only a handful survive. Largely located in the 2nd, 9th and 10th arrondissements, by 1850 there were some 150 passages, though only two dozen or so survive to this day. The first passage I want to draw your attention to is known as the Passage des Deux Pavillons and is located in the first arrondissement of the city, just steps away from the famed Palais Royal. This passage is only partially covered and is definitely not the most interesting passage, but leads you right to the next one, which is Gallery Vivienne. The sumptuous Gallery Vivienne is rather hard to miss, thanks to its glittering lights, mosaic flooring and a handful of upscale shops this must-see parisian attraction is easily the most famous of the second ronisman passages and has famously been in competition with its next door neighbor gallery colbert gallery vivienne was built in 1823 at the behest of the president of the chambre of notaire the passage was originally named marchu Swiftly changed to Vivienne, the covered walkway soon attracted a whole host of tailors, confectioners and more. Now you can still visit the gallery, which is closed to Bourse, for free. Once upon a time, the nearby next door neighbour Gallery Colbert was in constant rivalry and competition with Gallery Vivienne. However, since its construction in 1826, Gallery Colbert ended up being a little less successful than its down the street counterpart and now has no stores nor shops within its covered halls. Moving on to the lesser known and more off the beaten path passages of the city, Passage Choiseul is a continuation of Rue de Choiseul, a charming street in the second neighbourhood. Constructed between 1826 and 1827, where the site now stands was once a former Hôtel Particulier, which was a mansion house. For those with an interest in French literature, it's worth noting that iconic writer Louis Ferdinand Céline resided in Passage Choiseul during his childhood. And it must have made an impression on Céline, for he went on to mention the passage in two of his most famous works, Death on the Installment Plan and Journey to the End of the Night. Out of all the covered passages of Paris, Passage des Panoramas is probably my favourite. And not just because this bustling arcade is the oldest arcade in the French capital. The site where the Passage des Panoramas now stands was once the Hôtel de Montmorency Luxembourg. Constructed between 1706 and 1710, the Hôtel Particulier was built in the classical style. Used as a residence for Thomas Rivier de Ricobourg, the hotel was completely destroyed by the end of the 18th century, making way for the passage. Constructed in 1799, in 1861, the passage became the first illuminated passage of Paris when gas lamps were installed. The name Panoramas comes from the fact that at the site of where the Hôtel de Montmorency Luxembourg once stood, there were two rotundas featuring projections of great panoramic views of Paris. From its inception, the passageway became a key player in the philatelic trade in Paris, drawing collectors and amateurs alike from far and wide. That is to say, the walkway is home to plenty of stamp trade and collecting shops, as well as print vendors and coin and autograph stores. This remains so to this day. Constructed in the 1840s and completed in 1846, 
Passage du Foix is one of the most popular covered arcades in Paris thanks to its sheer beauty and ease of access along Grand Boulevard. Directly on the opposite side of the road from the ever so popular Passage des Panorama, this continuation of the Parisian arcades allows for rain-free shopping all year long. Because yes, it does rain in Paris even in the summer. What is particularly unique about the passage is that thanks to its position on three former Parisian housing plots, the passage stretches for around 140 meters before making a right angle up and down steps, depending on which way you're traveling, and then another right angle before continuing for another 140 meters or so. Passage du Foix is also the first Parisian arcade to be constructed entirely in iron and glass. So ahead of time was the passage that it's heated via underfloor heating. Carry on through Passage du Foix and you'll soon reach Passage Verdot, which in turn is home to a number of vintage and secondhand bookshops. It's also home to one of my favorite noodle shops in Paris, Neko Ramen. Nicknamed locally as Little India, wander through Passage Brady and the 10th arrondissement and you can expect to find a large selection of Indian, Pakistani and Bangladeshi shops. The walkway is around a 10 minute walk from Passage Vado and was constructed in 1828. Passage Brady is unique and that it is one of the only passages to be split into two parts on either side of a busy main road. While one half is covered, the other half can be found on the other side of Rue Strasbourg and is in the open air. Heading back to the second arrondissement, there's one passage that I probably wouldn't recommend going to if you don't have a lot of time to explore, but it's interesting to see if you truly want to cover all of the passages of Paris. This is Passage Le Moine. Much like Passage Brady, there are a lot of open air spaces here, but unlike Passage Brady, there's no shops. And to be honest, it's quite residential. So it's not of great interest. It's also not the most beautiful architecture in the area. So I would just kind of visit if you only have time. Just down the street, you'll find Passage du Ponceau. Local restaurants and authentic stores can be found in Passage du Ponceau, a hidden passage in the second, while everyone flocks to the nearby Arts et Métiers Museum and its similarly beautiful metro station, few tourists venture inside this Ponceau passageway. Built in 1826, Passage du Ponceau was then shortened in the 1840s to incorporate the new Boulevard de Sebastopol. Abandoned for decades and used as a storage facility, the passage is once more open to the public, albeit in an altered state. Literally two minutes away from the previous passageway, you'll find Passage du Caire. The longest and narrowest covered passage in Paris can be found in the form of Passage du Caire, which stretches an impressive 360 meters. Rather unique in the fact that the arcade forms a fishbone shape in its layout, walk inside and there are dozens of fashion retailers and places to purchase clothes. Named for the Egyptian capital city Cairo, Passage du Caire features three statues of the ancient Egyptian god Hathor. Just a few minutes walk away and close to the Etienne Marcel metro station, which is on the line four, Passage du Bourg l'Abbé is an escape from the hustle and bustle of the crowds of the second arrondissement. Located between the Passage du Grand Cerf and Passage de l'Ancre, the arcade was modified in 1828 so as to add a glass roof which would protect shoppers from the rain and wind during bad weather. Literally just across the road, and so you won't have to worry about the rain if it is raining during your visit, is my favorite passage of all, which is the Passage du Grand Cerf. The passage is built on the site of Hôtellerie du Grand Cerf, which was demolished in 1825. Around this time, covered passageways were becoming more and more fashionable. Although no one knows the exact date Passage du Grand Cerf was opened, records show that the walkway was open to the public as early as 1827. It's at this point that I should tell you that Cerf means stag's head and you will find stag themed things 
all around the passageway. There are also a number of other interesting animal heads, not real ones of course, in uh, made out of paper, wood, etc. And so be sure to spy these during your visit. And there you have it. Those are my favorite covered passageways in Paris. This is quite a big overview. So thank you to watching all the way to the end of the video and see you next time.